Hello, everyone. Welcome to the hospitality room. A little different look for us this week. We've had uh, some computer issues. Bobby Swafford, Blair Carr with you. How are you, Mr. Swafford? Good. The weekend is almost upon us. Uh, it's on, it's kind of sad. It's the last real football Sunday of the year. Of course, the Super Bowl is a little different, but with multiple yeah. games, uh, a little sad, uh, a little sad to watch bloodletting and Arkansas basketball this weekend. Uh, it's just Good it's boy. kind of a downtime, to be quite honest. Yes. All right. Let's 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 be upbeat. Let's start with football first. Okay. Uh, the coaching carousel appears to have ended. Harbaugh mm -hmm. lands with the Chargers. Raheem Morris out of left field yeah. gets the Falcons' job. Bill Belichick is nowhere to be found. Are you surprised? A little bit, uh, mainly because he had that second interview with Atlanta and yeah. everybody thought that was going to be the landing spot. And, uh, but you know, I, I was texting with a, with a friend of mine, you know, Atlanta interviewed everybody. I mean, yeah. if, if you were up you for a head coaching job, you, I think you got a call. I declined. Uh, the, the, I, I would have literally had made everything 28 to three across that building. So they didn't, they didn't want me there. Uh, <laughs> But it was amazing, like that they brought in so many people, and all of a sudden Raheem Morris like just kind of shows up out of nowhere, and like boom, he's hired. Mm -hmm. uh, and apparently, he, Morris was also kind of the, the heavy favorite to land the Seattle job, and so now the yeah. Seahawks are kind of left scrambling a little bit. Um, it, it is surprising to a certain extent to see that Belichick uh, is pretty much going to be without a job. Thought yeah. somebody would 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 take a risk because now you're going to say he's going to take a season off. He's going to be a year older. Um, and now, so he, I mean, he probably needs at least three seasons, three good seasons to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to break the all time wins record. And so unless somebody retires that we don't expect wink, wink at Kansas city, I don't see Bill Belichick being really in the, in the mix to, to break the all time wins record ever. Uh, but if Andy decides, you know, they win one and yeah. says, Hey, now it's, now it's my time to go. I can see the chiefs maybe picking up the phone and say, Hey, Bill, you want to win a few more? I can't see that happening. From the aspect of you, your defense is good, mm -hmm. you got spags. Um, my thought is, if that happens, do they hire the enemy? Yeah, but nobody else has hired the enemy either, though. I I know that's that's kind of the quandary because it's like, okay, they pimped him, they pimped him. Mm -hmm. Now you have an opening. If this guy's so great. Why don't you hire him? Right. And he also, he hasn't been hired for an offensive coordinator position yet either. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's 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 very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't expect Andy would retire. I think he's still got a couple of years left in him. Yeah. And and you've got Mahomes. So it's like. It's, I it's mean, hard to walk away from that, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, that would really be. I mean. Plus, and it's going to be like, okay, what are you scared of Harbaugh mm -hmm. and the Chargers? I mean, are you scared of Pierce at the Raiders? I mean, and granted, there's never a good time to walk away under your own terms. Yeah. But if you got it rolling, I mean, why would you give that up? Plus, he's got an outside shot, I think, of catching Shula's record, doesn't he? Uh, he he'd need to do it for a while. Uh, and okay. so I'll see if I can pull it up, but I mean, I, I know he he's like in the top five or six, but he's still a, a good ways away. Okay. Um, so, but if you're still cranking out 11, 12 wins a year, say yeah. 11 with now with the expanded schedule, you know, if you've got another four years in you, that's Andy, Andy Reed's fourth on the list at two fifty eight. Oh, okay. Uh, and is this, I don't, I don't want this is updated um so it might be a stretch to get to 300 then so he, so the record's 328 so belichick's 26 no, away he wouldn't get there uh, yeah, i don't so think 42 he, he is 70 wins away uh so you're talking so if they go 12 and 4 it takes you six years this yeah. he got six years left i don't, I, I don't know that he does yeah. yeah i don't think he does i mean granted you know the with the, with the 17 game schedule now I mean, 13 to 14 wins is not out of the realm of possibility, but 12 is a, probably a good average number, right? Yeah. Can, well, I mean, in the even, West, it's going to get harder now with Harbaugh yeah. and, and and Pierce and, you know, because everything ebbs and flows. Yeah. Denver so, had a pulse at some point last year. Yeah. So, well, at some point, they're going to get rid of Russell Wilson and actually get a call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah. So, I, I would say it's, it's, a, it's a long shot. Can he get to 300? Maybe that's the goal for Andy. He's, he's 42 mm -hmm. away from that. 
Um, that's so realistic. That's, that's four years of 14. No, that's, that's bad. Three years of 14. Yeah. And probably uh, hanging up at that point. Yeah. Cause I mean, you, you think with the playoffs and the regular season, he could probably average 14. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be about right. Mm-hmm. So. All right, so the so Seattle's the only job we have open. They still haven't named Dan Quinn, so you wonder if the egg that they laid against the Packers mm-hmm. has something to do with that. The Packers fired their defensive – the coordinator jobs are what's fascinating. Fangio's going to Philly. Sirianni is staying, though everybody else apparently on his staff is out, mm-hmm. which is odd. So Fangio goes there. The Packers get rid of their D.C., uh, the Panthers hire a guy no one's ever heard of, and we'll probably never heard be heard from again in two years anyway. Yeah. But that and that's the quantity I was going to ask you. You got thirty two chances to be or opportunities to be a head coach in the NFL. Yep. As bad a job as that is, that's one of thirty two. Mm-hmm. Do you take it or do you not take it? Because you're not going to succeed. Yeah. Well, so the the Carolina uh, Canales Canales, whatever you pronounce his last mm-hmm. name, you know, obviously worked wonders with the Tampa Bay office this year, and, yeah. and but what he did with Baker Mayfield, and so they're hoping he can bottle that and do that with Bryce Young. I get, I get that what they're thinking is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Probably not going to happen because guess what? Carolina doesn't have Baker Mayfield or Mike Evans. Yeah, so yeah. That, that, that's a problem. Uh, but and yeah, you've yeah, got you're an right. owner who's crazy. Yeah, it, so it has been a revolving door with the coordinators the last couple of weeks, but. I, if you're young, you, you can pick and choose, especially mm-hmm. if you're a young coordinator for a good team. Like, it's say, if you're the OC of the Chargers, if you're the OC of the Bengals, you can kind of pick and choose because you know you're going to have some years of success. Chargers mm-hmm. had a bad year this year. I understand that. But yeah. if you're a, if you're the coordinator of the Buccaneers, you got to jump at that opportunity because you don't know if that's going to be there next year because Baker's a free agent. Mike Evans is a free agent. They're way over the cap space. They have been for a couple of years now. Uh, so it, it kind of depends on the situation, to be honest. Um, there, there's to me, there's been a couple of grand slam hires in this offseason. Jim Harbaugh obviously yes. makes makes all the sense in the world. The best job goes to the best coach, and, and I think that's yes. what happened. Uh, Belichick, I thought, would have been interested if they ever, ever called him. Uh, he never got that interview, at least not a publicized interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, so th- they got the best coach, uh, the best coordinator position. Maybe Raheem Morris, I mean, he's a really good coach, we knew he was going to land somewhere. Uh, but Fangio going to the Eagles just makes way too much sense. And the fact that the yeah. Dolphins let him walk out the door just because he wanted to be closer to family, uh, one is very stand up and very nice of you, makes yeah. zero sense as an organization. Your defense was pretty good until you were ravaged by injuries. But you don't let one of the top five defensive coordinators of the last 25 years walk out the door and then go to a team that's a Super Bowl contender already. You just don't do that. Yeah. Well, it doesn't make sense, but then the Dolphins have not really made a lot of great moves. I mean, mm-hmm. McDaniel's probably on the hot seat next year if they don't win. They're Maybe. not the most stable organization. Yeah, they they have a lot of questions. You know, we, we've talked about Buffalo. I think we talked about it last week, how they're they're way over the salary cap for next year, and they may have to hit the, the reset button. Miami's in the same boat. They've yeah. got a lot of contracts that I know they can restructure them and save a ton of money, but they've got a lot of aging veterans on defense. They've got a lot of aging contracts on that other side of the football. Everybody loves the offense. Raheem Mostert's going to be in his 30s next year, by the, by the way. Mm. Uh, so, like, at, at what point do you say, okay, two is good. Tyreek, yeah, you're good. Waddle's going to be due for a big contract pretty soon. Though we have to, like, okay, we got to reset the button, too, because Jalen Ramsey is nowhere near the corner that he was a few years ago, and he costs a fortune. Uh, Xavier Howard's probably going to have to be let go. He costs a fortune. Uh, the defensive line is old and beat up and hurt. Uh, so to me, I mean, honestly, the biggest turnover on rosters, I think, come out of the AFC East. You had those two, Dolphins and the Bills, and the Patriots are obviously going to reset everybody, and the Jets have got a ton of old people that are going to have to let go at some point, and Aaron Rodgers come back. Uh, selfishly, that division is going to be a lot of fun to want, a lot of fun to watch in the offseason. I just don't know how good they are going to be you know, next year. Yeah, well, that's fair enough. So, uh, recapping the games last week, Ravens roll over the Texans. Not mm-hmm. really surprised by that. Um, the Lions hold off the Packers. Yeah. A little bit surprising. Chiefs Bills was just a phenomenal game. And if yeah. you're Josh Allen, I mean, everyone's bagging on Josh Allen. Yeah. I don't know why. I mean, he could not have played 
better. Granted, that last possession, but I mean, those happen. He hit mm-hmm. Davis with the freaking hands. He catches that, they win the game. 65 yard dime. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and that yeah. throw he made uh, to the end zone to Shakur, that, I mean, that was just mm-hmm. nasty. I mean, you, yeah. you great defense. He puts it right there. I mean, I don't know why everybody's blaming Josh Allen. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Uh, yeah, he put them in position to score. He put them in good position. He's getting criticized a lot because of that last drive, yes, because if you check down and you don't throw it for the end zone, you keep you don't keep throwing it deep, mm-hmm. uh, you live to fight another day. And, and the second down play is the most egregious one where he – uh, he has literally has Steph Diggs on a five yard drag, and his, I think it was second eight, th- second and nine, five yard crosser, wide open, nobody within five yards of him. You know, you dump that off. It's a first down. You live to fight the other day, but he's always looking down the field, and that's the knock on Allen. Always has been, is he doesn't take the the gimme. He goes for the three pointer. Why drive to the bucket and you get a layup when you can knock down a three and and it can be flashier? Um, it, no zero turnovers inter- as far as interceptions in the playoffs. Didn't turn the ball over. No, we said like all the bills had to do to be successful is not turn the ball over. And he checked that box yeah. and they still couldn't get the job done. The fake punt killed him. Yeah. I mean, that was crazy. And then the yeah. chiefs give it right back with Hardman, which was, oh, I mean, I almost threw a shoe through the TV when that happened. I mean, do you what... like the rule. Yeah. I think the rule's fair. I mean, yeah, do the damn ball. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I mean, yeah, let's get mad at the rule. No, let's get mad at the play call. The guy had already fumbled once. Pacheco is a beast. He runs so angry. Yeah. And you're going to let Hardman run it in. It's mm-hmm. it's the cutesy stuff like that that just – it's yeah. so Andy Reid. I misspoke. It was the it was the 49ers that beat the Packers. Right. The Lions beat the Bucks, And that game was – both games were probably closer than anyone expected. Mm-hmm. But then again, I mean – we're down to the final eight. The margins are so thin. Yeah, the games are supposed to be good at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, so Green Bay lost that game, not on the final drive. They lost the game in the first half when they didn't take advantage of some some situations where the 49ers just gave it to them on a silver platter. Yes. Uh, and, you know, the, the, and I've said it, you know, if, probably for the last six weeks, the Packers are the youngest team in football. Like, we expected them to, like, you know, stumble every now and then. And the fact that they got to this point and looked as good as doing so in the process is scary for the future. And, yeah. I, and you mentioned that they're letting their defensive coordinator go. That offense for the next couple of years, it could, it could be nasty. Yeah. I mean, the defense is not bad either. That's why I was right. a little shocked that they got rid of the coordinator. It was like, really? Mm-hmm. What are we and, doing? And the, Lion, the Lions are doing everything that we thought they wouldn't do. Like, yeah. they're finishing games. They're making crucial – crucial plays in, in critical moments they're not lying it up they're not yeah. they're not going detroit all over it yeah and and they haven't been there before so they don't even have the experience to fall back on to go oh yeah we shouldn't do it this way yeah so i, I, I mean like everybody right. else in the country minus the 49er fans that still exist everybody's <laughs> pulling for detroit have to be oh it's yeah. such a it's a, such a cool story oh i agree yeah i think so well let's just get right to the picks uh because we want to make those before yeah. the time runs out on the Zoom. Start first. Uh, Chiefs-Ravens is the first game up. Mm-hmm. Expecting rain, 45 degrees. Ravens at home, giving three and a half. It's close. I, th- I think this is a close game. Uh, the weather benefits Baltimore. With as mm-hmm. nasty as their defense has looked, and I know Kansas City's defense has been very good too. Uh, second half. Yeah, the second half, the way Baltimore's defense looked against Houston was unreal. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, they just shut down an offense that had been pretty pretty fun to watch, pretty electric the last six or eight weeks of the season. Uh, so I'm going to go Baltimore to cover. I, I think they I think they win it by a touchdown. Um, they they seem to have it. Lamar didn't play outstanding last week, still played mm-hmm. pretty good. Uh, and that's all they need. As good as that defense is, they don't need MVP Lamar. They need pretty good Lamar. And as long as he plays pretty good, uh, I, I think that they should be the favorite. Yeah, I I will take – the Ravens and give the points because the Chiefs never cover. But, and I've been critical of Mahomes this year. Mm-hmm. Last two games, yeah, unreal. man, he's he's been fabulous. He's taken it to another level. Rice stepped up. Kelsey is available now. Pacheco's mm-hmm. running hard. But then to, uh, Tooney, the tackle is questionable. Yeah, Pacheco's banged up. But the Ravens are banged up too. I just think if the Ravens can get the lead, granted the Chiefs make their adjustments, Spagnola does a great job at halftime of adjusting. Mm-hmm. But coming from behind is not 
they didn't have to do it against the Bills. I don't yeah. know that they could have. I don't know that they can against the Ravens in that defense, who seems to kind of have their number. Both have great kickers. Yeah. So the three and a half is really kind of dicey. Tucker's great. Bucker's pretty accurate, but it seems like he's missed a few. I don't know. I, something tells me this the Ravens should roll, but then again, Lamar has playoff issues. So yeah. Who knows? There's, there's two things that, that I'm, I'm really paying attention to this game. So if you're Kansas City, the willingness to run the football, even if you don't have success, uh, yeah. say if Baltimore shuts you down for the first quarter, quarter and a half, do you continue to try to run Pacheco and let that offensive line try to wear him down? Or do you say, OK, forget it. We're just going to throw it every down. So one, the patience in the run game. But two, Mark Andrews is now active. Like they activated him today. The tight end for the Ravens hadn't played in a while. But when he plays... Right. Baltimore's offense is different. Uh, yeah. They're good. They're borderline unguardable at times when Mark Andrews is on the field. Uh, I think he's a top three tight end when he's healthy. So if he if he's anywhere close to what he is, uh, what he normally is in this game, Baltimore's got a chance to not only win, but win convincingly. Well, he's, he's a Kelsey type influence for them. No doubt. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So that's how we see the AFC. And how about the numbers last week? 50 million people watched Bill's Chiefs. Yeah. Do you not want the NFL on your network? Lions 49ers, Drake Greenlaw, the former Fayetteville Bulldog, mm-hmm. former Arkansas Razorback, huge interceptions. Niners are giving seven at home. Yeah, so that's a lot of points. Yeah. Give me, give me the guys in blue on the road. Uh, I'll take the Lions. Uh, I, I think the 49ers, they're, they're the one seed. They should be favored for a reason. Yeah. But I don't think anybody at this point in the season should be favored by a touchdown. No. Uh, so, yeah, so that's I'm just going that, – that spread's too big. Uh, I like Detroit. I think they can muck it up enough. Jameer Gibbs is really starting to establish himself as a, as a dude, uh, as we kind of all expected him to be in that, that, that wide-open offense. McCaffrey's good. Purdy's got to play better than he did last week, no question. If he plays like he did last week, Detroit's going to a Super Bowl. Can't believe I just said that. Words came out of my mouth. Uh, yeah. But if Purdy plays well, 49ers should win. But if he doesn't, and if, it, if the elements, uh, looks like it's going to be 70 and sunny, according to the AccuWeather. So uh, yeah. not going to be an issue like it was last week. But if Purdy struggles, Jared Goff is good enough to, to win that game on the road. Well, two things to, to me. Debo, if they don't have Debo, yeah, that offense, I mean, I'm sorry. That, that's a weapon. That's huge. And two, the 49ers defensive front, Bosa and Young, should be all world, but they're not getting a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. The Lions offensive line is very good. Frank Ragnow has turned into one of the best centers in the league, if not the best. Yeah. Why can't why can't Pittman find more guys like him? But that's a side story. Because they don't make many like him. That's why. Well, that's <laughs> that's true, but still, you know, yeah. find something similar. Uh, and all the pressure's on the 49ers. Mm-hmm. The Lions have, are, you know. They can play free. They can play loose. Yeah. I, I it would not shock me to see Detroit win this thing. Yeah. So what, I, what I'm really concerned with in this game, say it's 24-17, 24-20 in the fourth quarter, Detroit's got a lead. Mm-hmm. Do, 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 do things start to tighten up a little bit? They start to clench the cheeks a little bit like, oh, my gosh, we've never been here. We're on the verge. And that's how games slip away. When when you when you're not supposed to be there, you're not used to being there, and all of a sudden you you're on the threshold. Say that pop fly goes up, and you're about to make the play. Sometimes yeah, things yeah. happen. I know. You I had, had to, to go there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I was there. So <laughs> I if anybody can make the joke about it, I can. Yeah. No. I was, no. Wasn't too far away from it. But no, that's. I mean, that's a great point. I mean, everybody. You can train. You can lift all the weights. You can do all mm-hmm. that stuff. But the human element of the emotion of the moment is something you cannot prepare for. Correct. And being on the road may be actually an advantage for Detroit. I think so, too. If they play this game in Detroit, I mean, let's face it, there's distractions everywhere. They sold out Ford Field for a watch party in five hours. Wow. Wow. I mean, so they're going to have 60, 70, 80,000. I can't know how, how many it holds a sold out stadium to watch it on the video board. That's insane. That's awesome. That's what that well, is. It's, it's it's also a testament to how long they've been suffering. Yeah, that's also and true. And it's just, yeah, I mean, 
they've got nothing to lose. They're not expected to be there. Yeah, I think all the pressure's on the 49ers and Debo's not healthy. Man, mm-hmm. that's and, and Purdy's been shaky a little bit down the stretch. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it should be gang, should be unreal. And the numbers for these broadcasts should just be oh off the chart. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's it's wild to think that Mahomes versus Lamar Jackson is not the most talked about game this week. Everybody's well, talking the about first the game. I know it's the first game, but everybody's talking about the Lions. Everybody, yeah. everybody wants to see the Lions go to the Super Bowl. As high as those numbers are going to be on CBS, Fox is about to rake it in because oh, yes. every, at least the first half, and maybe if they're getting blown out, it's different. Everybody wants to see Detroit win. Everybody. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of CBS, everybody is bagging on Nance and, and Romo this week. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's a little surprising to me um, because. Romo is what he is, and he's kind of been that way the last couple of years. Yep. It's like suddenly everybody noticed, well, maybe he's not that good. <laughs> um, it's like, why Why is this suddenly becoming a thing? And is Nance, you know, is it time to – because yes. we've seen Al slip, and Nance is starting to slip a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's just not entertaining. I mean, so, so this is the bad part about – you know, and I, I've used this analogy a bunch. It's the bad thing about being good. You know, it's like, so it's, you're, you're the superhero, right? You live long yeah. enough to die a hero. You're, you live long enough to be a villain. But we've got so tired of hearing Jim Nance and Tony Romo call big games. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like on uh, basketball, we got so tired of hearing the same voices over and over and over. I mean, like, honestly, I'm tired of hearing Billy Packer and Grant Hill call basketball games. Just, yeah. they, don't give, they don't give me anything. Uh, that's why people in Arkansas are so tired of hearing Jimmy Dykes. You hear the same voice over and over. At some mm-hmm. point, you get tired of hearing it. Yeah, because they don't have any new materials, yeah. so to speak. Honestly, if you want to criticize any broadcaster, criticize Greg Olson, because he's not very yeah. for for the lead Fox analyst. He's not very good, and for the love of God, tie your tie. Yeah, well, yeah, Burkhart's okay. He's, he's not fine. Great. Yeah, he's not great, but I mean, B- Buck and Aitman have chemistry, and that's the thing. You've got yeah. to have some chemistry and whatnot, and they're pretty solid, but I mean, everyone made a big deal out of Romo because he was able to predict plays coming when he first started and it was new. It was, he was a fresh voice. Everybody mm-hmm. loved it. And then CBS gave him more money than they're giving Nance, which n- I never understood. Yeah. But you know, every, everybody play like kind of like you say, everybody gets tired of the same voice after a while. They do. So I be mean, interesting to see how Brady does next year if he does it. Yeah. No, I, th- I think the novelty will be there to start. And it's all about – it's you know, Romo was really good when he started because he clearly did his homework. Yes. Uh, is Tom Brady going to do the homework? Or are you going to are you going to break down film for six days a week and make it clear that you watched some film and prepared for this game? Or are you going to sh- roll into the, the production meeting on Friday with the coaches and say, okay, what are you doing this week? Yeah. Because it well, seems – I, I mean, Romo that... and Nance say the same things over and over like they didn't do a lot of prep work. See, I think that's the thing with Romo. I've noticed in the last couple of years, it doesn't seem like he's as prepared. Mm-hmm. He just kind of rolls in and does his thing and whatever. Yeah, so. I agree with that. Inter- interesting. All right, let's move. We mentioned uh, Dykes. We'll mention so, basketball. So, so who you got? <laughs> so, so I, I'm going Detroit to cover. You, you going the same? I don't think we. Yeah, have a I got, give me the Lions. Give me the lines. We got off on that soapbox a little bit. You start talking announcers to us. It's like crack. Just throw it right in our veins. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So getting to Razorback basketball before we get killed off on the Zoom here. One, game day's coming tomorrow to Bud Mm Walton. Why? I have no idea. Um, The debacle against Ole Miss. But would it shock you if this team plays competitively against Kentucky? No. Bud Walton's worth seven to ten points. Mm-hmm. I mean, we saw it against Purdue. We saw it against Duke. I mean, that team in that building, when it's electric, is hard to beat. Mm-hmm. Them on at eight o'clock on a Tuesday or Wednesday night, they're they're mortal. Uh, you you let that you let that game day crowd into the or the arena five hours before tip off or however early it is, and yeah. you sell concessions. And you sell a, a seven few hours, I think, actually. Yeah, and, and they're not kicking them out, and you and and you let them drink all afternoon. It's going to be nutty. <laughs> Yeah, and it's gonna have to be. Yeah, and it's uh, and it's Kentucky and Cal. You know, I mean, Arkansas doesn't need a reason to get up for that. No, but I, I will admit, I am, we're going. But it just doesn't. 
I don't know. It doesn't have the gravitas it normally does because this team is just crazy. Yeah, when you lose by 30 to Auburn, 20 to South Carolina, and 25 to Ole Miss, yeah, Kentucky doesn't seem like a lot of fun. To be quite no, honest. no. It's it's almost like the worst-case scenario. It's like, man, I hate Kentucky, but yeah. oh, oh, just oh. – I think it's a locker room issue. Oh, 100% it is. Yeah, because yeah. there's, there's just no effort. There's no buy-in. There's no camaraderie. Mm-hmm. It's just been a total whiff. Yeah, I mean, it's it's almost like there's a couple guys on that roster that went through the motions in the offseason. So, you know what? I've got a big NIL deal. Uh, We're going to be really good. Everybody's going to look at me and say, hey, what a great year he's had. What a great Razorback he's become. And they didn't put in the work. They they bought into the hype. They bought into into that paycheck, too. Yeah, and the paycheck, yeah, ain't going to bounce. Yeah, they're going to get their bag either way, whether they perform or not. And we've seen it a bunch. I mean, yeah. and not not just at Arkansas, not just in no. basketball. Guys get paid and they don't put in the work. Yeah. It's the market's gonna have to correct itself. It's just a mm-hmm. question of how long is it gonna take for that to actually happen. Yeah. You're Probably right. two more years, you think? Until Congress the whole steps things in, and in fixes flux it. anyway. And, and, and t- until a governing body, whether it's the NCAA, which we know is not gonna happen, or yeah government the congress is going to have to step in and say okay this is your cap this is what you can do yeah otherwise you're going to have you're because what's going to stop kentucky basketball from all of a sudden turning into what ohio state has done like just throwing hey here, we got 12 million dollars we're going to go get 12 million dollar players yeah well and then that's, NBA team. yeah well and then that's the thing too if you're arkansas okay where are you going to where are you going to put the majority of your nil money Basketball, baseball, or football. Oh, all okay. right. It's it, it's running us out of time. So we <laughs> we got we ten will, minutes. We're good. Yeah, we uh, do. I we got ten minutes. It tells me. We're oh, fine. really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So we do have ten minutes. So yeah. So where are you going to put your NL, nil money? I mean, do you really want to spend it on football when you're most likely mm-hmm. not going to get the return there? that you would in baseball and basketball. Yeah. So here's my thing. I'm glad you brought up baseball, that argument with baseball. You obviously got a bigger roster, but it's such a crap shoot to win a baseball game. <sighs> you know, uh, you know what a bleeder here, you know, one off the knob there, a bad call, miss, miss strike call at the plate. I mean, Pitcher can you really talk. say, okay, can we, can we really say, Hey, we're going to go put $15 million into putting building a 40 man baseball roster and think it's a good investment. I don't know that you can. Probably not. Yeah. Else you might try. They don't need to. They're already getting Yeah, the that's true. Yeah. I'm, and you don't make enough money on baseball to 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 warrant that as a university. As a yeah. fan, maybe. If you're a diehard Razorback fan uh, and you, you got an extra three or $4 million to burn, maybe you do it. But mm-hmm. the university shouldn't do it. Yeah. Well, a school like Arkansas that's got good baseball and basketball, which is kind mm-hmm. of a rare combo, you know, and they're the ones having the success. You know, wouldn't you kind of want your money to go there? Whereas football, I mean. You just have to be relevant in football and you're going to make money. Arkansas yeah. right now is irrelevant, which is the problem. Yeah. So Arkansas, yeah. every dime they have needs to go into football to get back to relevancy. Okay. And then it'll lift all the other boats? Yes. Okay. That makes sense. I mean, Muss is, Muss is having a bad year. He hasn't had, this hasn't turned Muss into a bad coach. No. No. But. I will say I am shocked in the sense that they haven't found at least one or two things that this group can do well. Yeah. And just repeat that. Yeah. You know, I mean, like the starting lineup we saw against Ole Miss, he put Harris in to try to give him some spark. I mean, I give him credit for trying stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's like, what are they doing in the three hour practice? Yeah. I mean, because there's, they just look so lost on the floor. I mean, 40 seconds into the game must look like he was ready to go home. Yeah. And he probably well, was. So, but it's and just a nuts. Yeah. Because everything I do in my life always apparently revolves around the Patriots. Doesn't matter how good your coach is. You can be Muslim you can be Belichick. You know what a great coach cannot do? Overcome a bad roster. True. And the Arkansas's got a bad roster. Yeah. You're just going to have to eat it and like it. Yeah, and and Tremont Mark, the only player who's been worth anything all season long, is hurt and and may or may not play against Kentucky. Brazil, who a lot of people think is a first round draft pick, I don't see it at least oh. in the effort. Yeah, uh, he's hurt. He may not play. 
It, yeah. Without those two guys, Arkansas may lose by 40. Yeah, I mean, but they beat Duke without Mark, did they not? They did. Which makes no sense. I mean, I was thinking about this today. How bad a loss is that for Duke? Right yeah, now. It's looking worse and worse. I mean, it's bad. <laughs> Is that a quad I mean, two or is that, is that, that might even a quad three game for Duke now? It's just, that's just unbelievable to me to yeah. think, think that um, a bit, the, your biggest win is a really bad loss for the other team. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah. The talk about Brazil and the lottery and stuff. I mean, like he would get killed in the NBA. Those are mm-hmm. grown men. Yeah. Well, what I is, saw the prop man the of an skill set. Yeah, the, 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 Trevor in Brazil, and I'm, I'm not much of a gambler, especially when it comes to the prop bets. Uh, he had a prop bet of over under one offensive rebound in the game the other night. <laughs> I think For a guy who's six eleven. Yeah. Well, you go under on this entire team. They don't. They don't rebound for diddly poo on the offensive end. You can look like me, and if you're six eleven, you should at least get one offensive rebound. All you got to do is stick your hands up. Yeah, I'm sorry. Learn a hook shot for God's sakes, yeah. you know. I don't just, get it. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just it's a frustrating year. And then uh, one of the baseball pitchers is already out till March. I mean, it's yeah. just like but we knew that was coming. Repeat. We yes. knew that was coming. And at least at one pitcher for Arkansas is going to get hurt in the preseason. Uh, it just depends: is he going to miss the entire year? Or is he just going to miss the entire year? And they're going to string him along. Yeah, I There's mean, no what other- is it? What is it with that? They they built the it pitching happened, lab. Well, and, it happens at every school. We just don't pay attention yeah. to it. Everybody it loses. Never pitchers. happened here until they built the pitching lab, and then oh, it, that's true. Yeah, it's just that's like point. nonstop. <laughs> so yeah, I guess they start practice today or yesterday or today. But yeah, uh, and there'll probably be oh, there'll probably be a thousand people watching. Yeah. Practice. I mean, if the weather's decent in Fayetteville, it's, I mean, it's, it's been miserable all week here, so I can't yeah. imagine it's a whole lot better there. Well, if you get lost in the fog, and of course in central Arkansas, if you can avoid the potholes for yeah. God's sakes. You can't, uh, by the way. And oh, you had the fog on top of the potholes. So oh, the, it's the, insane. The yeah. morning commute was fun this morning. Oh, yeah. Well, we were down there going to Children's, and it was just like, oh, my God. Yeah. I don't know how you do it every day. Uh, you, you, you grit your teeth and you hold on to the steering wheels, what you do. <laughs> You, you have you suffered the fate of the flat tire thanks to the pothole yet? No, not yet. Because I, I generally I, I am one to pay attention. I don't ride people's yeah. tail one, and I kind of pay attention because the potholes are bad, mm-hmm. and so I kind of know where they are. You know, and I, I make the same drive every day. It's not like I, I pick different routes to work. I mean, it's literally get on the interstate and you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so I know where most of them are. Fortunately, yeah. Well, hopefully you don't have to endure that. But man, yeah. that is. So if you ever if you ever pass the thirty exchange with forty and you go past the big uh, cathedral on the left like you're going to Memphis, yep, never be in the second lane from the right. So okay, that, so because it splits to go up to, to Cabot or you go straight to Memphis. Mm-hmm. So that third lane from the left or the second from the right, that lane there, never be in that lane. Yeah, that's where all the trucks stay. And, oh yeah, yeah, they're they're craters. Yeah, I mean it's just it's unbelievable. Every time yeah. you go down to Central Ar- go on forty or thirty around Central Arkansas, it's just yeah, it's worse and worse. It's awful. Got to figure something out. Mm-hmm. Crazy. All right, uh, we've got like three minutes left. Uh, <laughs> hit us up on Twitter, HPMM Podcast, at it Gmail, send it to us. Is it even going to be close Saturday? Yeah, I think I think Bud Walton will keep it close. I think the spreads at what seven or eight is probably going to open at seven or eight. I don't, it may not be set. A lot of a lot of times, college basketball is not set till day of. Um, yeah, I don't look like it's up yet. Six. Arkansas is getting six, which yeah. seems very. I don't optimistic. know. The over under is one sixty seven point five. That's that's a big number. That's that's a game in the eighties. Yeah. What do they know? Well, that's only... that's that, that's eighty seven seventy nine is what that is. That's... I don't I don't know about that number. Um, but Bud, Bud Walton will keep it close. I, I don't, I'm not saying bet on Arkansas because I don't think they do cover it, but I, I yeah. think it's, you know, five to 11, somewhere in that range. I hope so. My fear is if it gets out of hand fast, like it did the one year under Pell in Lexington, mm-hmm. it's not, I mean, well, it, if they, if they start like they did against Auburn or Kentucky or South Carolina A&M. or Ole Miss, then yeah, it's, then you're you're done. But if it starts like I did against A and M, yeah, and that yourself, you get yourself a party. Yeah, and well, and then it's going to be a white knuckle <laughs> yeah. ride to the end. 
Right. Oh my and gosh. Calipari will probably get ejected again and they'll come back and win in the second half. He's like, oh, all part of my master plan. Like he did you know, three years ago, four years ago. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, that's the loudest I've ever heard Bud. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm granted it was loud at the Duke game and it was a different energy from start to finish, no question. But when Calipari got tossed, by far was the loudest I've ever heard that arena. Mm-hmm. And yet it worked out in their favor. Yeah. Damn him. Damn him. <laughs> Oh, well. All right. Final words on this Friday, Mr. Swafford. No, nope. enjoy. Enjoy championship Sunday. It's the second best NFL su- oh. uh, weekend of the year compared to last weekend, but it's the second best one. I think last weekend's the best. Does it live up to the hype this year? Yes. I think we've got two really good games coming. Sweet. All right. Well, should be a great weekend. Hogs, yeah. Kentucky, NFL football. What more do you want? Let's do it. All right. For Bobby on Blair, we'll talk to you next time on the Hospitality Room presented by Mascot Media.